This video demonstrates proper setup and use of the Micromill milling machine for extracting otolith samples for chemical or isotopic analysis. The Micromill is a computer controlled micro sampling device that was designed for milling materials to recover samples and powder for chemical and isotopic analysis. It uses a three axis stage for positional accuracy to one micron. All operations of the Micromill are controlled by the user through the computer. In addition to this video, the black binder beside the Micromill computer has all of the instructions listed. To begin with, turn on the computer and the monitor. The button for the monitor is located on the right side of the monitor. When the screen appears, choose the first option, Windows NT Workstation version 4, and hit enter. The computer will automatically start with the highlighted selection if nothing is done. When the blue screen appears, turn on the Micromill. The power button is located at the back and to the lower right of the machine. Press Control Alt Delete as indicated by the screen. When the login information window appears asking for an administrator login, don't bother filling anything in and click OK. Another window will appear as the computer boots up concerning the DHCP client. Choose No. Once the computer has booted up, click on the Micromill icon on the desktop. As the program opens, a setup checklist window will appear on the right side of the screen and the Z-axis stage will move to its upper extent. At this point, you should attach your sample to the sample plate. Measure the thickness of your sample with a micrometer and record. Set up your sample on one of the black circular stage plates from the Micromill. Use two-sided tape to secure a glass slide to the stage plate. Then take another piece of tape and attach your sample to the top of the glass slide. Be sure the sample is secured tightly. Press down firmly on the sample. Hot glue from a glue gun can be used along the edges of this, your sample to provide additional strength. Place the stage plate and sample back on the micromill stage and tighten down the stage screw. The silver knob on the right. On the screen, there will be three slider bars which control movement of the X, Y, and Z axes. By right clicking on the scroll bars, you can adjust the speed of them to one times, two times, five times, and ten times. Use these to line up both platforms for the X and Y axes, as this is necessary to allow the full motion of the drill when coring samples. Line up the red dots so that both surfaces are flush on the stage. Once the X and Y stages are lined up, click on the Stages Calibrated button in the Setup Checklist window, and the X, Y, and Z stages will calibrate themselves. Once this setup is done, you should have a series of green lights light up in the setup checklist window, except for the sample thickness. We use the reflected light source when sampling odorless, and the controls can be found in the upper left of the screen. Adjust the light to an appropriate level and manually move the Z stage down closer to the sample until it is in focus. To set your sample thickness, center your sample on the screen and choose the Sample Thickness button on the Setup Checklist window and follow the screen prompts carefully. At the first prompt, select Measure New Value and then click Next. In the Next Prompt window, 
Move the sample over to the drill camera by pushing the drill camera button at the top of the screen. And then push next. The micro mill will then move the drill bit down so that it just touches the surface of your sample and will take a measurement. Record the sample thickness measured. The sample thickness will be the total value of your sample, the tape and the glass slide, or everything between the tip of the drill bit and the stage plate. Click OK and switch back to the scope camera after. The XY offset should be calibrated correctly, but if you should notice that the drill is not drilling exactly where you want it to be during the sampling, the XY offset may be off and will need to be reset. Click on the sample map in the lower left corner of the screen, then click current stage position, and then make new map in the window that pops up. The program will automatically make the map in four quadrants. Once the micro mill is set up, you can basically extract two varieties of samples, actual cores or pieces of your sample, or for smaller old bliths, powder. This will also depend on what type of analysis you are doing to your samples, as it will re require different amounts of sample material. To sample a core or an annuli, choose the line tool or other suitable tool from the tools button at the top of the screen. With the line tool, you can draw out the area of the otolith core you want to extract, tracing the particular annuli or area of the sample you want. The line will show up in a defined line pattern window on the left of the screen. Click the left mouse button to start the line and each time to add a new point. Click the right mouse button to complete the pattern. If you should have to move a line or a point on your line sample, click on the arrow button on the menu bar in the top right of the screen. You can move the entire pattern by clicking on any point of the line of the, the pattern, or you can move individ individual points by clicking on the line's point squares. You want to make sure the drill bit will not interfere with the annula you want to collect, so be aware of the size and shape of the drill bit being used. The 003 round burr is best for most applications and is the bit that we use most often. Some bits are tapered, such as the 008 scriber drill bit, and it will cut into your sample widthwise as it drills deeper. Since the drill bit drills in the middle of the sample line you draw, it will drill into part of your sample and destroy valuable material. Generally, samples are small and you will want to obtain as much material as possible from them for your analysis. Offsetting the drill path by the radius of the drill bit will help you maximize your sample size. Using the line tool, drill a short line in the resin away from your sample and then use the measuring tool to determine the width of the drill bit. The 003 Burr drill bit has a width or diameter of about 360 microns and a radius of 176 to 180 microns. Other bits will have different thicknesses. From each drawing point of your first line, draw a perpendicular line equal to the radius of the drill bit along your sample line. If using the 003 bit, this line will be approximately 180 micrometers long. There is a window in the bottom of the screen that shows measurements. Follow the D measurements indicator when drawing your lines. It won't always be 180 microns, but try to get as close to 180 microns as possible. Once done, Connect the endpoints of the lines to obtain a new line out from the sample. This will be the path the drill follows and will account for the width of the drill bit so that no sample material is lost. Before you begin milling the sample, you will have to adjust a few drill settings in the properties. Select the line you want to drill in the Define Patterns window on the left side of the screen. Right click on the line of the Define Patterns box and choose properties. It will be necessary to determine how fast and deep you want the drill to cut through the otolith. These settings will vary with the otolith sample as some are larger or smaller, hard or more brittle. It helps to have samples embedded in epoxy or resin. 
You don't want to drill too deep or have a scan speed too fast or you will crack and damage your sample. The core will probably break, but you want to try to minimize this as much as possible. The settings are as follows. Scan speed, the speed at which the drill passes through the sample. This is usually set between 10 and 65 microns per second. For fragile otoliths like turbot, use the slower speed of 15 to 20 microns per second. Depth, the depth the drill cuts with each pass. This is usually set between 30 and 50 microns. Drill speed, this should be set between 95 and 100 percent always. Passes, the number of passes the drill will make through the sample. This number varies with the thickness of the sample, but most samples are one millimeter thick. You will need to divide the thickness of the sample by the depth of each pass to get how many passes you'll need to make to cut through the otolith section. It is important to use the thickness you measured with the calipers at the start and not the measurement the drill took. <coughs> Record the settings you're using so you can modify them if your practice sections break. For example, if your sample is one millimeter thick or a thousand microns, Drilling at 30 microns depth per pass would mean you would need a total of 33 passes of the drill to completely drill through the sample. Make the total number of the passes one or two less than your estimated number to stop the drill from drilling into the sample plate. For the example mentioned, you would set the number of passes to 31 or 32. When your settings are adjusted, click OK and then click on Run Scans on the left hand side of the screen and a window will pop up. Click on selected patterns only and be sure to check the enable drill during scan box. Click run and the drill will begin drilling. You can abort the drilling process at any time by clicking abort on the screen or using the kill abort button on the micromill. The kill abort button will stop the drill immediately, but you cannot pick up where you left off. So you would have to note which pass you were on before hitting the button and start over. As the micromill drills the sample, you can check the progress with the magnifying lens. You can also use a can of compressed air to clear away any powder that builds up. When the sample is almost finished, it may need another pass or two to be completely free from the rest of the otolith. You can set the drill to do a singular pass, but be sure when you set up the drill sequence that you add the depth you have already drilled. For example, if you dr already drilled a one millimeter section down to 930 microns, or 31 passes, set the drill depth to 960 microns and run the drill scan for one more pass to free the sample. Use either the naked eye or the scope to gently free the core pieces with a small pair of forceps. The piece or pieces of the core may be held in place by tape. Carefully remove the core pieces from the otolith and check for any residual tape or resin epoxy under the dissecting scope and place in a sample vial and weigh. The core samples can now be decontaminated and sent off for analysis. It's good to practice on some sample otoliths before proceeding with working on your actual samples. When working with small otoliths, attempting to mill out a small core or one or more individual annuli can be challenging, but with a few extra steps, you can ensure that you get an accurate sample. In most cases with small otoliths, the drill bit is much larger than the sample or annuli you wish to mill, and almost always you will be collecting powder only from your sample, no visible pieces. These micro samples can be collected after the first sample is first coarsely milled around the area you are sampling to expose the actual sample. This procedure is similar to that described in Worcester et al. 1999. You should first set up the micro mill as you would if you were taking an ordinary core sample marking the edge or annulus of the otolith with a line and then adding another line accounting for the radius of the drill bit. This unwanted material or resin will be removed. It is also good to remove some of the coarse material surrounding your sample. You should only have to remove an area of about one or two drill bits width drilling down almost to the bottom of the sample but stopping 
before the drill actually drills into the glass slide or the stage plate. When the drill is finished drilling this unwanted material, make sure you remove all excess powder from the sample and in the groove using compressed air, ethanol, small probes, and forceps. This is so that you won't contaminate the material you wish to extract. Once this is completed, determine the area or annulus you wish to sample and mark it with a new line using the line tool, adding a few drops of ethanol from a syringe to the surface of the otolith helps to see the individual annuli more clearly. Make sure you use the 003 round burr bit. Draw perpendicular lines 185 microns out from the new line's curve. And then connect these endpoints of these lines with, to obtain a new secondary line. This way, the edge of the drill bit is used to remove your sample material as the drill passes along each annulus. When you set the number of passes for the depth of the sample material you wish to collect, make it one or two passes less than the total you use to drill the coarse material. This is so that you don't collect any unwanted material in the area you cleared away. One pass or about 30 microns depth should be sufficient. Make several passes with the drill if needed to completely remove the annula you wish to sample. Once the area is drilled, you can transfer the powder to an acid wash vial. Make sure all tools you use are cleaned in ethanol when taking samples for isotopic analysis. The powder is too fine to apply the decontamination procedures seen in the otolith decontamination video. Transfer the powder with a pair of forceps and a small probe. Place the powder into the vial in a similar manner as you would under the dissecting scope. Use the micromill scope or the computer screen image to make sure you remove all the powder and clean the otolith sample well with compressed air and ethanol before beginning your next scan. For tilted surfaces, set up the micromill as you would when taking a flat surface sample as described previously. This includes calibrating the stages and taking a sample thickness as well. Once done, choose the tools button and the reference mark tool to place three reference marks on the sample. The tilted surface program requires three reference points in the sample in order to compensate for the angle. Then choose the tilted surface button and follow the screen prompts. Once finished, choose the appropriate tool from the tool button again and map out the area you want to drill on the sample. It is sometimes necessary to attach the samples more securely to the glass slide, especially when using the tilted surface option. Otherwise, the drill will simply move the sample instead of drilling through it. If the sample piece is large or in an irregular shape, you can use crystal bond thermoplastic to secure the sample to the glass slide. The two-sided tape usually is not enough to hold the sample securely. Using the small thermoline hot plate, place a glass slide on it and allow it to heat up. Test if the slide is hot enough by dabbing a small amount of thermoplastic on it and see if it melts. Smear a small amount on the slide. Place your sample in the melted thermoplastic. Remove from the hot plate and allow it to dry. Make sure you use as little thermoplastic as possible, but enough to hold the sample. It is difficult to remove and will be necessary to remove from the sample for such tests as bomb radiocarbon dating. The following points may help if you should find the micromill is not working as it should. 
In all cases, you should seek assistance of someone qualified in the operation of the micromill before attempting these yourself. If the slide stage motor will not stop moving when the plate sample plate is moved between the scope camera and the drill camera, the set screw on the stage motor has come loose and will need to be retightened. See the tightening procedure in the micromill binder. If the drill does not drill in the area you want it to, the XY offset is out of alignment and will need to be readjusted. If switching from the drill camera to the scope camera and the video screen stays on the drill camera with the colorful line, hit the scope camera button again. When shutting down the system, the computer, screen, and micromill will have to be turned off manually. The computer will not shut down by itself. Make sure everything is turned off and cover the micromill.